Today, we are going to look at cyber laws in Pakistan as internet and internet related technologies, computer and computer related technologies are everywhere around us and they are an essential part of our lives. It is only uh, obvious uh, that you know this cyberspace or this digital life uh, that you know we have at an individual level as well as at a professional level is vulnerable to various kinds of cyber crimes, to the actions of various kinds of uh, cyber thieves uh, you know, who create uh, various kinds of mischief. So when we, have, when we have a constant threat of cyber crime, it is necessary to have effective cyber laws which can protect us and prevent these uh, cyber crimes. Uh, keeping, uh, uh, keeping, in, uh, in, you know, keeping up to these uh, changing new times, Pakistan has also, over the last two decades, promulgated uh, and then again revisited and promulgated improved kinds of cyber laws. In this lecture, we're going to look at the cyber laws which are currently implemented in Pakistan. However, before looking at them, we need to realize why these cyber laws are important. Well, cyber laws are important because we need to know that for our organization, uh, which particular laws apply, which rules are there, how uh, we accidentally do not break any law, and how in case we are subjected or we are a victim to any kind of cyber mischief, what action we can take. This applies to us as professionals in our organization, as well as it applies to us individually. Uh, now, as I said earlier, Pakistan has over the last two decades promulgated different kinds of cyber laws. These laws not only deal with the crime of the internet, they also deal with other, the other dimensions related to computers and computer related technologies. Uh, two of these cyber laws which have been implemented in Pakistan over the last two decades are the most well known ones. The first one are Electronic Transaction Ordinance 2002. And the second one is Electronic or Cyber Crime Bill 2007. Let's first look at the Electronic Transaction Ordinance 2002. Uh, Electronic Transaction Ordinance or ETO uh, 2002 was the first ever IT relevant legislation created by uh, our national lawmakers. Uh, one of the major things or advantages that it offered was that it provided for protection of Pakistani e-commerce locally and globally. Then it also provided for the protection of Pakistan's critical infrastructure. Uh, however, since ETO 2002 were the first cyber laws or first laws governing the internet and computer technologies in Pakistan, they were heavily taken uh, from the foreign laws uh, related to cyber crime. However, even then, this was a breakthrough having ETO 2002 because before uh, ETO 2002, there was no recognition of electronic documentation. There was no recognition of electronic records. There was no recognition of evidential basis of documents and records. Uh, it was not possible you know, to authenticate or identify digital or electronic signatures or other forms of authentication, which now seems to be uh, an, an, you know, an essential part of our day-to-day -day lives. Further, there was no online transaction system uh, which had any kind of legal basis. Electronic data and forensic evidence was not covered by law. Uh, and further, you know, there were actually no rules governing absolutely any kind of electronic or computer related uh, aspects of our life. However, things improved post ETO 2002. Uh, the major changes which came about after ETO 2002 was promulgated was that electronic documentation and records were recognized. Electronic and digital forms of authentication and identification obtained a legal basis. Messages through email, fax, mobile phones, plastic cards, as well as online messages were now recognized. ETO 2002 had 43 sections. Uh, and the most notable thing was that it dealt with eight areas related to e-commerce, which included that it recognized electronic documents, uh, it recognized electronic communication, uh, it recognized the presence of websites. Further, uh, it covered digital signature certification providers, it covered stamp duty, attestation, it had uh, you know, detailed jurisdiction, it had details on the offenses. 
Now, uh, you know, we're going to look at some of uh, the cyber crimes which were covered by ETO 2002. And uh, just as example, to have an idea that which crimes were covered under it and what penalties or punishments existed uh, for those violating uh, these cyber laws. First and foremost, uh, it covered the violation of private or privacy information. And anybody uh, who was, you know, uh, who was like uh, breaking this or uh, who was trying to, you know, gain any information system uh, uh, through a breach of privacy could receive an imprisonment of seven years or a fine up to rupees one million. Further, it covered any damages that may occur to information system. So if there was anybody who is, was trying to alter, modify, delete, remove, generate, transmit or store information such that it was causing a hindrance or it was causing a damage to the information system, uh, whether it was done uh, you know, knowingly or unknowingly, this could lead to an imprisonment of seven years and a fine of up to rupees one million. The offenses under ETO 2002, uh, you know, were non-bailable, compoundable, and cognizable. No court inferior to the Court of Session shall try any offense under ETO 2002. Uh, while uh, ETO 2002 uh, was revolutionary in its own nature because this was the first time that any law was promulgated in Pakistan which was covering the cyber world or the cyberspace. Uh, an improvement over ETO 2002 came in the form of Electronic and Cyber Crime Bill of 2007. Uh, the 2007 bill, uh, you know, known as Prevention of Electronic Crimes Ordinance, came into force and was promulgated by the President of or President of Pakistan on 31st December 2007. This bill dealt with additional electronic crimes, which included cyber terrorism, data damage, electronic fraud, electronic forgery, unauthorized access to code, cyber stalking, cyber spamming, and cyber spoofing. Electronic Crime Bill 2007 applied to every person who commits an offense irrespective of his nationality or citizenship. It gives exclusive powers to the Federal Investigation Agency, FIA, to investigate and charge cases against such crimes. Uh, now, just looking at some of the punishments which were included in the Electronic or Cyber Crime Bill of 2007, every respective offense under this law has its distinguished punishment, which can lead to an imprisonment or to a fine. For instance, data damage. Whoever with intent to illegal gain uh, or, you know, it causes harm to the public or any person damages any data shall come under this section of data damage and may receive, if guilty, may receive a punishment up to three years and a fine of three lakh. Similarly, electronic fraud is also covered under the Electronic Crime Bill of 2007. Whoever, uh, people who get illegal gains by using data, electronic system, or device, within in, and it is done with an intent to deceive any other person, you know, receive a punishment under the Electronic Crime Bill 2007 of up to seven years imprisonment and seven lakh rupees of fine. Then electronic forgery, which was previously and initially not covered, was also covered under, under the Electronic Crime Bill of 2007. Whoever, for unlawful gain, interferes with data, electronic system, or device with an intent to cause harm or to commit fraud by any input, alteration, or suppression of data resulting in unauthentic data that it is considered or acted upon for leg legal purposes or in a nutshell is committing any kind of an electronic forgery uh, can receive uh, a punishment of seven years imprisonment and seven lakh rupees of fine. Similarly, malicious code, whoever willfully writes, offers, makes available, distributes, or transmits malicious code through an electronic system or device, which may cause further harm, is also uh, liable to receive a punishment of five years imprisonment of five lakh rupees of fine. Likewise, uh, another uh, crime, which is something individuals, uh, in normal, ordinary individuals university-going students, faculty members, 
uh, are uh, often, you know, they experience a crime uh, called cyber stalking. Celebrities we see are often subjected to cyber uh, stalking, uh, where, you know, somebody harasses a person or follows them or monitors their movement. Uh, you know, such activities come under uh, cyber stalking. They can distribute your photos or your pictures without your knowledge or consent or can actually, you know, infringe on your private space. Such kind of cyber stalking was also covered under Electronic Crime Bill of 2007 and is punishable by three years imprisonment and three lakh rupees of fine. Similarly, spamming where, uh, you know, illegal electronic messages are sent uh, to several people uh, without any permission of the recipient uh, is also punishable by six months imprisonment and 50,000 rupees of fine. Spoofing, uh, where, you know, you, you establish a website or send an electronic message with a fake source, uh, you know, to be uh, believed by the recipient or visitor or its electronic system is also likely uh, to result in an imprisonment of three years and a fine of rupees three lakh. So there are several offenses which are covered by, uh, you know, uh, the electronic or cyber crime bill 2007, and each one has its resulting imprisonment or a resulting fine, with the most notable one being that cyber terrorism is, you know, you're likely to receive a lifetime imprisonment or up to 10 million rupees in, uh, in fine if you are found guilty of cyber, ter uh, of cyber terrorism. Similarly, another notable uh, cyber crime, uh, pornography was also covered under uh, this uh, cyber crime bill 2007, where a person is likely uh, to get a punishment of up to 10 years if found guilty.